Hello there and thank you for watching my video presentation here on how to size your solar system. This is a simple way to get a general idea if solar PV or solar panels will work for you and how much it will cost. First thing we have to determine is how much power I'll need or you'll need and so we can figure that out by looking at your power bill. There's a direct correlation between how much energy you use annually and how many solar panels you will need. If you take a look at your power bill, a lot of them will tell you in a chart format of some type. Um, it'll break it down per month and it'll actually tell you exactly how many kilowatt hours you use per month. You can add all those up for the previous 12 months. Um, if it's a real confusing bill and you can't seem to find it, although I believe by law it's got to be on there, you can just go ahead and call your power company and just say, hey look, how much energy did I use in kilowatt hours the last 12 months? Um, now you add all that up, that gives you your annual kilowatt hour usage. And then you're going to divide that amount by 1.14. Uh, that gives us a general idea on how much power in watts that your system will need, at least to start with here. Uh, here's an example of a typical electric bill I might see here in upstate New York. Uh, a customer might use about 9,000 kilowatt hours annually. You take that uh, 9,000 kilowatt hours, divide that by 1.14, that gives us a 7,894 watt system. We divide that number by the power rating of the solar panels. In this case, we're just going to run with 310 watts. I think that's an AXA tech. And we divide our amount of power we need, which is 7,894, by the amount of power output of the solar panel. That gives us about 25.46 solar panels. Obviously, we don't have 0.46 solar panels. I like to round down to a number that's evenly divisible by 310. So we're going to go down to 24 solar panels times 310 watts. It gives us 7,440 watts. Now we're going to take that number, and this is top secret information, folks. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you're going to go to a website called pvwatts.nrel.gov. And you're going to type in your zip code of your installation. Uh, you click on Go to System Info. And then you're just going to type in some other data. In this case, we're going to type in uh, 7,440 watts or a 7.44 kW system. And then we type in the azimuth of the array. 90 degrees would be east. 180 would be south. 270 would be west. And everywhere in between, for this example, we're just going to use 180 degrees south azimuth. Uh, FYI, solar does not work uh, north. Um, and then we're going to type in our pitch of our roof. In this case, I'm just going to run with 30 degrees. Since we don't normally know uh, what the pitch of the roof is, that's a good number to run with. That will change your output of your system. Uh, that's for another day, but we're just going to run uh, with 30 degrees right now. You hit enter, and then the system tells you how many kilowatt hours you expect to produce annually with your solar system. Now we have to take a look at our roof dimensions. Uh, here's some more top secret information. Uh, Google Earth is great for many things, and we use it quite a bit in our industry. Uh, not only to find a location, but you can get uh, some dimensions. Uh, up on the top in your Google Earth program, which, by the way, you'll have to install on your desktop, um, you're going to click on the ruler icon at the top of the screen and set the units to feet. And that's when the magic happens. You just point and click your mouse to one edge of the roof and drag it to the other. And then get your height. And Google Earth gives you the dimensions in feet. We're going to multiply that width times the length of the area to be installed. And then we come up with our square footage. Now, how many solar panels will fit on my roof? Well, now that we have the dimensions of the roof in square feet, we simply go to the manufacturer's spec sheet of our solar panel to find out the dimensions of the actual PV module itself. We divide the square footage of the roof by the dimensions in square feet of the solar panel, and this tells us how many we can fit on the roof. I like to use a conservative estimate. I usually will subtract two feet from each dimension. Many new fire codes will require that three-foot perimeter around the roof, at least on the left side, the right side, and the top side. Pretty much can go right to the edge on the bottom. 
Um, but we're just going to run with two feet for now. Your local codes will uh, dictate what that is. So in this case, I'll give you an example of the roof. The roof is 16 foot high, about 40 foot wide. I'm going to take off two feet on each side. Uh, it comes up with 38 feet times 14 feet, about 532 foot squared of roof. We take that number, we divide it by 21 square feet, which is the dimension of the solar panel. Yeah, we can fit about 25 solar panels on the roof, so 24 solar panels should fit just fine. Um, this is real cut and dry stuff, folks, that I'm going over here. There's a lot of other things to take into consideration when you're finally designing the system that your, uh, your installer will give you a much more detailed idea. However, that being said, um, we're going to run with the 24 solar panels on air. And uh, now that we know the amount of solar panels, the amount of watts we're going to need and that we can fit it on the roof, we're going to get some system sizing. Uh, I'm just going to run with a number of 350, or yeah, 350, $3.50 a watt installed. <coughs> Excuse me. It uh, gives us an idea on how much the system will cost before tax credits and incentives. Now, folks, every job is different because of the difficulty of the installation. Um, Every area is different. It depends on the solar uh, panels you're using. Um, you know, are we going to need a lift to get the materials there? Uh, are we going to need, what type of delivery are we going to do? Do we need a lift to get up on the roof? Uh, is it a genie lift? Is it a scissor lift? Uh, what are we going to be using? Uh, is the roof pitch higher than 45 degrees? Is it tight, tough for the installers to be on the roof? Uh, is it tough to install? That's going to be an add-on. Uh, what's the travel time? How long, uh, how far is the, the company that's installing from the location it's being installed on? Are we using string inverters? Are we using micro inverters? Um, there's just all kinds of different things. How far away is the breaker box? How far away is the home run? Obviously, in this case, it's a roof mount, so we shouldn't have any trenching, but you know, for some reason, if there is, that's an add-on. Obviously, if you're doing a ground mount, that's going to be more. But in this case, just for simplicity's sake, we're going to run with 350 a watt. So we're going to take $3.50 a watt, multiply that times 7,440 watts that we're going to need. That's going to give us a price of $26,040. You're probably sitting there going, wow, that's a lot of money. Well, wait, we're not done yet. We need to take advantage of those tax credits and the rebates. We'll use New York State as an example. Uh, currently, it's 50 cents a watt as an incentive. By the way, you can look on your local power bill, and you'll see somewhere on there in that one section where they have all those miscellaneous charges per kilowatt hour, you know, dot .00065 per kilowatt hour, something like that. You'll see something in there that says RPS slash SPC, uh, which will stand for Renewable Portfolio Standard, Standard or Systems Benefits Charge. However you slice it up, that is a small amount of money that you're all paying in your state per kilowatt hour that goes towards this fund. Uh, it's not usually just for solar. It's usually used for uh, all kinds of uh, energy efficiency upgrades uh, that most of you in your state are able to take advantage of. It also helps pay for your free home energy audits, which here in New York State, we're all entitled to one every now and then. And uh, get, kind of getting off topic, if you do are offered one for free in your state, please take advantage of it. They come in with do they do the door blower test for you? Really, nothing to do with your electricity consumption. Uh, however, they will go over any air leaks and things like that. So unrelated, that's for another day. But please take advantage of that. You're paying for it anyways. Uh, in New York State, we also have a tax credit of 25 percent or five thousand dollars, whichever is less. And there's also the 30 percent federal tax credit that President Bush put into effect. That is set to expire in 2016, so any installations put in through 2016 will uh, get that tax credit. Um, I don't know. i got to think they're going to extend that. There's just so many people in the solar industry now uh, that are all buying cars and homes and putting driveways in and buying uh, appliances and such. There's so much money being pumped into the economy that I really got to think they're going to extend that, but who knows? So we need to deduct, 
deduct the incentive amount prior to any tax credit. So in this case, that 50 cents a watt uh, is uh, at 7,440 watts. That's going to bring our uh, price down to 22,320. And now we deduct the tax credits from this number, that 22,320. So 22,320, we're going to take $5,000 off of that, which will bring us to 17,320. And then you're also going to get that 30% federal tax credit. So we're going to take $6,696, subtract that from $17,320. That's going to give us a final cost of $10,624. That's a much more manageable number, I'm sure you'll agree. There is no sales tax, as it is a capital improvement, at least here in New York. Uh, there's a moratorium on sales tax on solar and property tax increases because of a solar installation. So in other words... Your property tax, at least here in New York, isn't going to go up $26,000 uh, or, well, be based on a $26,000 increase because of the solar installation. And, by the way, uh, capital improvement uh, can also be a generator, by the way. Um, so if you're having to be in the market for a generator or something like that, you're probably not going to pay your sales tax. Uh, this brings us to our payback time. I get that question a lot. Mark, what is the payback? Uh, it seems to be a big buzzword. Uh, of course, my internal answer to that is, when's the power company going to pay you back? <laughs> Never. You'll be paying for electricity your entire life. Um, so, at any rate, though, we want to uh, figure this out. So, now that we know how much the system is going to cost, we need to figure out how long it'll take to break even. After using the PV Watts program, we've figured out we'll create about 9,313 kilowatt hours annually. And it's based on 180 degree azimuth and a 30 degree pitch. And we're going to need to divide the cost of the solar PV system installed after the rebates and the tax credit by the amount you're currently paying per kilowatt hour. We figured this out at the beginning of uh, the exercise here, doing the power bill exercise. So we're going to use 14 cents a kilowatt hour as an example. Uh, seems to be pretty common here in New York State. Um, now we're going to take our system cost, divide that by the uh, cost per kilowatt hour, and that's going to give us our break-even amount of kilowatt hours. Um, in this case, uh, we take the 10624, divide that by the 14 cents a kilowatt hour. That's going to give us 75,885 kilowatt hours, what we need to produce for the system to pay for itself. We divide that by the 9,313 kilowatt hours we're going to create annually. And so your payback time is going to be about 8.14 years, uh, give or take. could be about eight years, basically, to pay for itself. That's a pretty common payback uh, uh, period. Uh, five to eight years seems pretty common. Although larger systems could be a bit more. Um, and now the solar system, PV system, is designed with 25 years of life expectancy. However, there are many accounts. Uh, folks that will tell you that they've had them up for 30 years, 40 years. Uh, I personally have never met these people, but I have read them in some trade publications. Uh, we will use 25 years life expectancy for this example, which is pretty standard, by the way. So it looks like you receive about 17 years of free electricity. Uh, we multiply the average annual kilowatt hours produced by the system by 17 years. And this gives us the amount of kilowatt hours the system will provide for free. I love that word free. Free is me. So 17 years times 9,330 kilowatt hours equals 158,610 kilowatt hours that we've created for free. And we're going to go ahead and take the amount of energy created for free by the solar system. Multiply that by 14 cents a kilowatt hour. Folks, that equals about $16,949.66. You're saving about $22,205 over the course of 25 years, plus any price increases. And you're taking back control of your energy costs, locking in your rate for the next 25 years, at least for electricity, give or take. And imagine if you could have done that with gasoline 25 years ago when it was $0.75. Cents a gallon. Now you're starting to see the picture. A little light bulb went off, huh? <laughs> hey there, we're going to take that number and subtract the amount the system costs 
then divide by the same number to determine the ROI. Now, people usually have two reasons to go solar. It's saving money green and it's going green. In this case, the ROI is incredible. We won't get into how many metric tons or what have you of carbon emissions you're going to uh, not send into the uh, ionosphere. But um, it's a lot, folks. There's different calculators online. You can figure that out. Um, so in this case, I won't bore you with it, but folks, we are looking at a 379% ROI. I'm going to ask you this. You going to make that in the stock market? Folks, you're looking at like five times the amount of money you invested. Pretty good. All in there. So at any rate, once again, my name is Mark, and uh, I'd be more than happy to... Uh, do a report for you, or you have learned how to do it yourself. So that is all. Feel free to contact me. And uh, thank you for your interest in solar, and I'll have some more videos coming up. Once again, thanks again.